Hi there! Today we're going to look at lesson 3-2, which is solving addition and subtraction one-step inequalities. Before we get started, I just want to do a little experiment on an inequality. So I'm going to start with an inequality that says 4 is less than 7. And we know that that's true. But what I would like to do is to add a number to both sides of this inequality. Well, let's just try adding 2. So if I add 2 to both sides of the inequality, it will say 6 is less than 9. And we know that 6 is less than 9. That is true. Well, let's try this again. And instead of adding a number to both sides of the inequality, I'm going to subtract. So let's try subtracting 2 to both sides of the inequality. Well now I'm going to get 2 is less than 5. Oh boy, there are the dogs barking again. Okay, so 2 is less than 5. And is it true that 2 is less than 5? Well yeah, it is true. So hopefully from this information we can see that if we were to add the same number to both sides of an inequality or subtract the same number from both sides of an inequality, that it's going to remain true. All right, with that information, let's try a couple examples. Okay, example number one. It says 3 less than x is at most 10. I would like you to circle the words in this sentence that represent the inequality symbol on your paper. Did you circle at most? That's right. We're going to replace the at most with an inequality symbol. Before we do that, I'm just going to put this little box here to represent that inequality symbol. We're going to change that into an inequality symbol in just a minute. Let's take uh, 3 less than x. That is going to go right here. How do I write 3 less than x? Well, remember, less than is a turnaround word. 3 less than x? That's x minus 3, is at most 10. So here's my 10. Now think of the word at most. At the very most, it could be 10. So could it be equal to 10? Yeah, it could. But that would be the very most. So I'm going to put equal to. Now if 10 is the very most, it can't be more than that. So this would have to be less than 10 x minus 3 is less than or equal to 10. Okay, now I have an inequality. Now let's solve it. We know here the goal is to get the x by itself, to isolate it and get it all by itself. So in order to do that, I would have to add 3. And if I add 3 over here, I will have to add 3 over here. And we just got done looking at if we add the same number to both sides of inequality, it still remains true. So I get x is less than or equal to 13. I'm just going to go ahead and circle that. So now what we can do is we can graph our solutions. All numbers that are less than or equal to 13. So I'm going to put a 13 on my number line. And then I have to decide is it an open or closed circle. Yep, it's going to be a closed circle. And which direction will I shape? Well, all numbers that are less than go this direction to the left. So less than goes this way, and those are all of my solutions. I could also check to see if my answer's right. I could pick a number that's less than or equal to 13 and put it back up in here for x. So I know that 10 is less than or equal to 13. I could plug 10 up here. 10 minus 3 is 7, and 7 is less than or equal to 10. Okay, So that works. Let's try the next one. Go ahead and read the sentence and circle the words that represent the inequality. Yep, is at least. So there's our inequality. So I'm going to put a little box here. I'll put the inequality in there in a minute. We have the difference of a and 12. The difference means to subtract. So the difference of a and 12 is a minus 12 is at least that goes there, negative 6. 
put this here. So it says is at least. That means that it is at the very least negative six. So it could be equal to negative six, but that's the very least. So I'm gonna put an equal to in there. So if it's at least negative six, that's the very least. It can't be any less than that, which means it could be more than that though. So this amount right here, the difference of a and 12, since it's at least six, it can't be less than that, then it would have to be greater than. So the difference of a and 12 is greater than or equal to negative six. All right, let's solve it. So adding 12, adding 12. We know that when we add a number to both sides of an inequality, it remains true, negative six plus 12. And there's my set of solutions. Any number that's greater than or equal to six is a solution. So I'm gonna put six on my number line and I decide if it's an open or closed circle and because it says or equal to, we want a closed circle to include six. And then everything greater than goes to the right. So we shade to the right. Also, we can use this as an arrow showing us that everything to the right gets shaded. And those are all my solutions. And I could also check a solution. I could pick any of the numbers over here, like seven, eight, nine, and plug them back up into the inequality to make sure it is true. So there we have a couple examples using the words at most and at least. Sometimes those are a little tricky to figure out what inequality symbol they represent. All right, let's try a couple more examples. Oop, not five and six yet. Okay, that's better. We need three and four. <laughs> I was skipping ahead. Okay, so here's number three. On number three, we have again an addition, one step inequality. So think about the goal is to get the M by itself. So how are we gonna get this M by itself? What are we gonna have to do to undo the 12? Yep, you're right, minus the 12. 12 minus 12 is zero. I can cross it off. I do the same thing to the other side. And in that little experiment we did earlier, we know that if we subtract the same number to both sides of an inequality, it remains true. So m is greater than or equal to, I'm just going to bring that symbol down, and 3 minus 12, yep, that's negative 9. So here are all of my solutions. m is representing any number here that is greater than or equal to negative 9. All of those are solutions. Any of those numbers I could plug back in for m and it would make this inequality true. So let's go down and graph it. I want a negative nine on my number line. I have to decide open or closed circle, and because it says or equal to, I need a closed circle. And everything greater than, see the arrow points to the right, all of these are my solutions. So all of these numbers, forever, for infinity, all the way to the right, are all going to be solutions to this inequality. I could plug any of those numbers in here. Number four. Goal is to get the end by itself, so go ahead. What are we going to have to do to undo the, the minus 6? Just like an equation, we're solving it the same way. Yep, opposite operation here. Bring down the n, bring down the inequality symbol. And negative 14 plus 6. Yep, negative 8. You can always use a calculator if you need to. Now notice here that there's a problem. The variable is not in the front. So before I circle this or graph it or do anything with it, I need to reverse it. I need to put the n on the left and the negative 8 on the right. Now do you see the inequality symbol? The big mouth here is opening to the n. So in my new inequality, I want the big mouth to be opening toward the n. There we go. So now it says negative 8 is less than n or n is greater than negative 8. Now they say the same thing, they're just written differently, but they're equivalent. So now I can put a circle around it. So this is saying all numbers that are greater than negative eight are solutions. So let's go down and we're gonna graph it. We need a negative eight. Open or close circle. Yep, open, there's no equal to, so we're not gonna include the negative eight, just everything greater than it. Going to the right, using this as the arrow to point the direction that I shade. And again, I could take any of these numbers here and I could plug them back up in for n and they would be true. 
Okay, now we're ready for number five. I guess I was getting excited for number five here. Okay, you'll notice on your notes that on the left side it says multi-step inequality. So we're going to try a couple multi-step inequalities that are pretty simple. So on this one, let's see what we can do to simplify this side over here. Do you see it? Yep, we have a negative 4p and a positive 5p, and we want to combine those together. So we know that negative 4 plus 5 is just 1. I don't need to put the 1 in front of the p. p is just fine by itself. And then we'll bring down the minus 2 after it, bring down the inequality symbol, and the negative 15. Now I'm ready for the next step. Remember, the goal here is to isolate the p and get the p all by itself. So I have to undo minus 2 with the opposite and to the both sides. Bring down the inequality symbol and negative 15 plus 2 and there we go. Only you didn't circle it, did you? Because hopefully you recognize the p is on the wrong side. So let's switch that around. Okay, I just took the negative 13 of the p and I reversed them. Do you see how the big mouth here is opening toward the p? Then I want the big mouth opening toward the p here. There we go. Now circle it. Okay, get ready to graph. What negative 13? And we can see because it doesn't have or equal to, open circle, arrow points to the right, greater than, all numbers that are greater than go this direction. And there we have it. We solved it and we graphed it. Number six. See how this one's different? Yeah, over here we had to combine the terms with a variable, and over here we're going to combine the terms that don't have the variable. So we have a 5 eighths and take away 7 sixteenths. And you guys know that to take away or to subtract fractions, you need to have a common denominator. So think about what would the common denominator be? Yep, 16. So I need to change 5 eighths into 16 ths. Well, that's easy. I multiply by 2. So this is going to give me 10 over 16. So now can I take 10 16 ths and subtract 7 16 ths? Of course. 10 minus 7 is 3. And then let's bring down the plus x. Bring down the, equal to, the inequality symbol and the 0. All right, now we're ready for the next step. We want to isolate the x and get it all by itself. It's added to 3 16 ths. So what's the inverse operation? Yep, minus 3 16 ths. That will make 0. So we can bring down the x, bring down the inequality symbol. We know that if we subtract the same number to both sides of an inequality, it remains true. 0 minus 3 16 ths. Don't overthink that. It's just negative 3 16 ths. And inequality, or sorry, the x is on the correct side. We're going to circle that. Now when you go down to graph it, you can put negative 3 16 wherever you want. I'll just put it right there. And I look at the inequality symbol and decide open or close circle. Yep, because it has an equal to closed. I want to include negative 3 16 And this time the inequality symbol says less than. It's pointing to the left. So all the numbers that are less than go this direction. Those are all of the solutions. Perfect. So we've graphed one step and a couple little multi-step inequalities here too. All right, let's take a look at some real-life situations where we can uh, write an inequality and solve it. So here we have a situation where we have a semi-truck. It stops in at a way station before passing over a bridge. There's a weight limit on the bridge. It's this much. The semi-truck alone weighs this much when it's completely empty. So we're going to need to write and solve an inequality to find out how much cargo the truck can carry and still be allowed to cross the bridge with this weight limit. Now cargo could be things that the truck is carrying, it could also be um, the gas that's in the, the truck, the person that's driving the truck, all of that, because this is the semi-truck when it's completely empty with nothing in it. Okay, so think about the two things that are, that are crossing the bridge. It would be the truck and the cargo. So we want to add those two weights together and then we have the total over here always on the right. Well, it's easy to put the total. I know the total is right here. I'm going to put it down here. Here's the total weight. Okay, so these two we need to figure out. Can we put a number for one of these? And I think we can because the semi-truck alone here weighs this, 32,300 pounds. Okay, so do we know how much the cargo weighs? Nope, we don't. So we're going to need a, a variable there. We can just maybe call it X. Oh, goodness. There they go again barking at something. 
Okay, so there's X. That's going to represent the cargo. Oh, geez, you guys. Okay, so now we have the truck and we have the weight of the cargo, and together those two are going to equal the total. So now we need an inequality symbol. Well, could the truck and the cargo equal 65,500 pounds and still be allowed to cross the bridge? Of course, but that's the maximum weight. So now I need to think the truck and the cargo, would they need to be greater than 65,500 pounds or would the truck and the cargo need to be less than 65,500 pounds? What do you think? Yeah, of course, they'd need to be less than. So if I read this from left to right, the truck and the cargo must be less than or equal to 65,500 pounds to be allowed to cross the bridge. Perfect. Now you may need a calculator with this one, maybe not. Let's solve it. Bring down the X. And then right here, we're gonna subtract. Subtracting 500 and 300, and then 65 minus 32. And there we go. So remember, X is representing all the cargo. The amount of cargo must be less than or equal to 33,200 pounds in order to be allowed to cross the bridge. Perfect. Let's do the very last one. Here's number eight. I don't know if you've ever wore a pedometer before, but a pedometer will track how many steps that you walk. Maybe you've done that in elementary school. I know some students have. But our goal, let's say, is to, to walk or to take at least 10,000 steps per day. So according to our pedometer, we've already walked this many steps. We want to write and solve an inequality to find the possible numbers of steps we could take to reach our goal. So think about the two things that are giving us a total of 10,000 steps. It would be the steps we already walked and the steps that we still need to walk. Okay. So let's put our total 10,000 right here. Okay. And then we've already walked 5,274 steps, so we can put that here. Now what we've already walked plus what we still need to walk will then give us our total. So we don't know how many more steps we still need to walk. We're gonna represent that with an X. Okay, now we need an inequality symbol. Okay, could the total amount that we walk be equal to 10,000 steps and still reach our goal? Yeah, it could, but that's the very least that we wanna walk. It says at least 10,000. It could equal it, but that's the, the very least. So if 10,000 is the very least amount we want to walk, it, that means we want to walk more than that to reach our goal. So the amount of steps here that I must take would have to be greater than 10,000 in order to reach my goal because that's the very least I want to walk. Okay, so now we have our inequality. We're going to solve it. So these are added together. I'd have to subtract. Bring down the x. And remember, if you ever need a calculator, you can always use that too. But if I subtract here, I would get 4,726. So remember the X is repre representing the how many steps I still need to take. So the amount of steps I still need to take would have to be greater than or equal to this many. If it's equal to this many, that means I just walked 10,000 steps and that's it, which still meets my goal. But if X is greater than this many, then I've went over 10,000, which still meets my goal. All right. Thank you for listening today and hopefully you learned something about solving one-step inequalities. Have a great day.